I'm a park ranger and I found a town that doesn't exist. I must be going crazy. I can see a town that doesn't exist. My name is Samuel Baker, I'm a Yellowstone National Park Ranger and I need some advice. I've spent my entire career fighting wildfires for the National Park Service, and after two decades in the field I thought I'd seen everything. Then, about four hours ago, an entire town just appeared in the middle of Yellowstone National Park, and the other ranger and I are the only ones who have been in it. We're not alone, however, as you might expect from something appearing out of nowhere inside one of America's most famous parks. The town is home to many people, some of whom have been there for years. They all seem perfectly normal, but they aren't aware that they live inside a national park. My partner, Thomas, was the first to notice the town. He'd driven into the valley a few hours before dawn one morning and saw a brand new sign on the road. Welcome to Hungry Horse. It read. When he drove past the next bend in the road he saw the motel. That's when he turned around to come and get me. The two of us had driven up the valley together in our trusty old Chevy Blazer and taken the long way around because we hadn't wanted to pass through the town until we were sure what it was. We parked at the base of the mountain and hiked up. We walked across the railroad tracks and passed a small gas station with a lone oil drum full of diesel fuel and another filled with water. The street was lined with old cars, some of which looked like they'd been there for a while, others which had probably just arrived that morning. Hungry Horse wasn't a ghost town, or even abandoned, it was thriving. Thomas and I entered the town cautiously, because despite appearances, this place could be dangerous. While we didn't run into any trouble, we did notice that everyone seemed indifferent to the fact they just appeared out of nowhere. Most of them ignored us completely, although a few gave us strange looks. Some of these people look familiar, I said, looking over at Thomas. He nodded. I know what you mean, Sam. I recognized a couple people in the diner too. It's weird. It's weird. Those words echoed in my head as I watched a man carrying a bucket walk down the sidewalk. It's weird, I repeated silently to myself. My eyes followed his movements. The man carried himself with confidence and purpose, but he never looked up at where he was walking. Instead he stared straight ahead and continued forward without looking back once. He disappeared around the corner of a building and I noticed another person staring directly at me. He was tall and thin, wearing a black hiking jacket. His face was pale and he was bald. He was standing in the doorway of a small coffee shop. He reminded me of the missing hiker we had searched for last week. That's when I realized why I recognized some of the people here. They are all people who have vanished from national parks. That's how we found out that almost every single person in Hungry Horse had been reported missing from national parks. We spoke to everyone we could find. Some refused to talk, others were friendly enough, but none of them knew anything about why they were there. As far as they were concerned, they lived in Hungry Horse, Montana. They weren't sure exactly when they arrived there. A lot of them couldn't remember much before arriving in Hungry Horse. They also told us they'd been here for years. Many of them had been born and raised in the town and believed it was the real deal. They all knew the townsfolk by name and went to school with them. One woman, an older lady named Irene, told us that she had no idea that she'd been reported missing. She worked at the local hardware store and had been living in Hungry Horse for more than 45 years. What about your husband? I asked. Do you have children? Grandchildren? She shook her head. No, I've never married. How do you feel about being here? Do you miss anywhere else? Your family? Maybe. Again, she shook her head. This is my home. As far as she knew, this was the only home she'd ever known. I tried to ask if she missed her family, but she just smiled and told me that her family was right here in Hungry Horse, Montana. We thanked her and left the hardware store. Hopping back into our park ranger truck, we drove deeper into the town. I really don't like this Sammy, Thomas said. I've had a feeling of being watched ever since we entered town. I looked over at him. He was staring at a man standing by a large semi-trailer outside the diner. The man was holding a jug of milk. I couldn't help but think of the hiker we'd found dead last week. Sam, are you listening to me? I snapped back to reality and looked at my partner. Thomas had started quivering in fear. Sorry, what did you say? I said, I think we should leave. I don't want to be here anymore. I looked around the town. There were so many people here. So many people who shouldn't be here. All of them were perfectly normal. Some of them even knew each other. How could there be so many people in a town that didn't exist? I agree. Let's go. I said. We drove away from the town and back to the ranger cabin. Thomas was still shaking. I'm going to call this in. He said. This whole thing is bullshit, but we better document it anyway. I mean, how could an entire town, full of missing people, just appear in the middle of Yellowstone? I nodded. Okay, I'll be in the cabin. I think I need some time to process all this shit. I sat down on the couch and closed my eyes. It all felt unreal. I kept thinking about the hiker we'd found out in the woods last week. He died while out on a hike in the wilderness. He'd been alone and confused, but I just saw him alive and well in a town that doesn't exist. I opened my eyes and looked around. I took in a deep breath and let it out. It smelled like wood smoke and pine. I stood up and started pacing the room. What am I supposed to make of all this? I asked myself, is this some kind of sick joke? Did the government put a town in Yellowstone for some reason? What if it's not a town, maybe it's a cover up for something worse? I thought before zoning out. There was a knock on the door. It startled me out of my daydream. Come in. I yelled. Two men came inside, both dressed in black suits. Are you the one in charge here? One of them asked. I looked at him and nodded. The guy was wearing a badge on his chest and a gun on his hip. He looked like an FBI agent. I'm about to go and talk to them, and I don't know if they'll believe me. What the fuck do I do? 
Update, first off let me clarify some things from the my first post. I was a wildland firefighter up until a year ago when I decided I needed a change of pace. They weren't FBI agents. They said they were from a private company that deals with the otherworldly. I sat in front of the two men, waiting for them to start asking questions. So dot 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 do you know why I've been assigned to this case? The taller of the two said. You're the only one in the park who knows anything about this. I nodded. Thomas also knows but I think you guys already know that. It's pretty weird. The town you described doesn't exist. Not according to the GPS and satellite data. Yes it does. I answered, surprised. It's a lie, the second man said. He had short blonde hair and wore glasses. We checked every single point on the map, every house, every business. There is nothing there. Bullshit. You can't tell me you've been everywhere in the park and haven't noticed it. I said angrily. When I first came to the park, I saw the sign for Hungry Horse. I thought it was a joke at first, but then I saw the motel, the gas station, the diner, the hardware store, and I saw the people inside them. The man with the glasses nodded slowly. But we've checked every inch of the surrounding area. We've looked at aerial photos, satellite images. We've even flown over the valley with a helicopter. Well, maybe you should have a look again. Maybe you missed something. I said defiantly. We did. There's nothing there. It's not possible. Do I have to fucking show you where it is myself? I asked. Both men exchanged glances. Then the shorter one nodded. Very well. If you're so sure you've seen something unusual, we'll take you there. Thank you. I said. I got out of my chair and followed the two men out of the cabin. They were in their early fifties, both with short hair and blue eyes. They were talking quietly to each other as I followed them out of the cabin to their unmarked car. Now, the man with the glasses said, if you could just lead us to your town. Sure, I replied. We drove deeper into the park. Our vehicle was equipped with a topographical GPS system, which made it easy to navigate through the rugged terrain. After an hour of driving we came to a hill overlooking a wide valley. We passed the sign for Hungry Horse. Did you see the sign? I yelled. The men just looked at each other. I'm sorry, what? The shorter one asked. There's a sign here. It says Hungry Horse, right? The man shook his head. I don't see anything. He pulled off the road and stopped right before the sign. He turned off the engine and looked at me. Maybe we should get out and look again. He suggested. I agreed. I got out of the car and ran over to the sign. It's right here. I shouted. He walked up behind me and looked over my shoulder. What the hell is this? It's a sign. It says Hungry Horse. I yelled. He looked at me and glared. I grabbed his arm and pulled him over to where I could see the sign. Can't you read? He pulled away and rolled his eyes. Read what? It says Hungry Horse. I yelled. What the hell are you talking about? He yelled back. I pointed at the sign. Look, the name of the town. The man sighed. There's no sign there. I got angry and was about to yell at the agent when out of the corner of my eye I saw someone walking towards us from the out of the woods in the direction of the town. It was Irene, the older woman from the hardware store. My eyes lit up and I pointed at her. Irene, I yelled excitedly. The agent turned to face the old woman. His eyes widened in surprise and he opened his mouth to say something. But before he could Irene hit him and sent him flying into a tree. He shouldn't have come back Ranger. She hissed. With lightning speed, she charged the agent with the glasses. Run. I yelled and jumped into the car. It was too late for the agent. Irene had already snapped his neck. I frantically ran back to the unmarked car and tried to start it. The engine sputtered and failed to turn over. Irene stood directly in front of me, blocking my path back to the cabin. What the fuck are you I yelled. You should have never come here. She said. You have no idea what you're getting yourself into. What the hell is going on? I yelled. She snarled and lunged forward. Her teeth had grown sharp and she snapped at me, but I evaded her bite and rammed my fist into her stomach. Got him it. I yelled. I grabbed her shoulders and threw her into the side of the car. She slid across the hood and fell to the ground. I jumped around the car and kicked her once in the ribs. I'm going to kill you. I said. She smiled. I've been dead for years honey. I was about to punch her again when a hand grabbed my arm and yanked me backwards. I spun around and stared at the person who grabbed my arm. It was Thomas, my partner. He had followed the agents and I. What the hell are you doing? I yelled. Don't be stupid. We have to get back to the cabin. I looked at him and shook my head. No, we can't run from these things. I said flabbergasted. What the hell is wrong with you? He slapped me hard across the face. Shut up. Shut the fuck up. Just shut up. I rubbed my cheek and looked at Thomas in disbelief. What the hell are you talking about? His eyes were wide open with panic. I heard Irene starting to get up. You have to leave now. Right fucking now. He grabbed me by the collar and pushed me into the driver's seat of the dead agent's car. Get in. He yelled. And drive. What about you? I asked. I can't fight them anymore. You know how many rangers they've taken. He said just get out of here. We just found out about the town yesterday. How do you know this shit? I yelled. You just found out about the town. He replied. The fuck does that mean? Just go. I'll keep Irene occupied. Get back to the cabin and read my journal. I don't believe this shit. He nodded. I know. I pulled a 180 and sped back down the road towards the cabin. I saw Thomas jump on Irene in the rear view mirror. He looked bigger than he usually does. He was standing on top of her, pinning her arms to the ground. Fuck you. Irene yelled. Thomas punched her in the face and she went limp. Stay down bitch. The last thing I saw was Thomas running towards the town. I'm back at the cabin and reading through his journal. There's so much I never knew about.